majority of UFO sightings are reported within close proximity to U.S. military installations, leading skeptics to argue that UFOs aren't extraterrestrial spacecraft but top-secret military hardware. But what happens when a UFO is sighted near an Air Force base and even the military admits that they don't know what it is? From Edwards Air Force Base, California, Carla Wohl reports. Edwards Air Force Base in California's Mojave Desert is an area where people often gather to scan the skies for UFO activity. But what about the people inside Edwards? Are they seeing UFOs too? According to this historic tape, they are. Uh, I've confirmed reports of uh, some unidentified flying objects here area. But uh, should be approximately, there was approximately five to seven objects, uh, green, red, and white flashing lights. Uh, from Edwards. And Sightings has also obtained still photographs of an Edwards Air Force Base radar screen taken on the day of the incident. They clearly show radar returns from the unidentified objects. That's those three little dots out there, and yeah. I'll say that uh, there are three definite objects. It's not weather, it's not clutter. Uh, it was 1965, the Cuban Missile Crisis still fresh in everyone's mind. The military was on constant alert for foreign intruders, but the Air Force was not expecting the kind of intruders who pierced the Edwards Shield on the night of October 7th. There are those who believe these visitors came from beyond our world, not to invade, but to make contact. This incident happened 30 years ago. And, and back then, these planes right here, these Blackbirds, were top secret. What's to say that this isn't what they saw that night up in the sky? Well, because these things don't glow. They're not made to be illuminated, to be spotted. They're made not to be seen. Independent producer Sam Sherman has created a compelling audio documentary about that eerie night titled The Edwards Air Force Base Encounter. His source material was a confusing jumble of declassified Air Force tape, which covered hours of official military communication. The tapes have finally been declassified. Why did you decide to do something with them? I felt the public should know something about it. It's a subject that has been ridiculed for many years. I was stunned to find out that a squadron of 12 UFOs was over Edwards and that there was an alert status and that five other bases were involved and NORAD was involved. It shocked me. And Sherman pointed out that one of the biggest surprises revealed in the tapes was that Air Force bases like Edwards had assigned UFO officers. They didn't have any uh, demon officers or leprechaun officers or angel officers for all the other paranormal subjects. They had UFO officers. Okay, they've finally gotten that UFO officer at Edwards out of the and uh, he said, yes, he would uh, like to have uh, a look. We're getting plenty of uh, live uh, data as a visual on these things, about 40 miles south of Edwards, several of them. At the radar screen in the Edwards Tower that night was Air Force Tech Sergeant Chuck Sorrells. He's not spoken publicly about the incident for more than 30 years until now. Looking back now, what do you think, what do you think it was? You've had 30 years to sort of think about it and, and wonder. I've thought about it on, on a lot of occasions. I know it was not an aircraft. I know it was not a helicopter. I know it was not a weather balloon. I know a lot of things it was not. It was not anything that we know of as a flying object that could do the maneuvers that this did. And what it was, I do not know. Soon after Sorrell started his shift, he alerted his superiors to the mysterious objects hovering and darting about the base, objects shown on this Air Force photograph of his radar screen. The decision was made to scramble an F-106 alert bird. Uh, Edwards, do you still have any of these uh, UFOs in sight? Yes. OK, try to pick out one you want to intercept, and we'll take a zero one in on him. The chase was on, but the pilot faced a formidable challenge. That thing is rising. Uh, tower, how's things look now? Uh, he's low. Look, search high, search high. He's doing a search high. Search very high. Let's the thing is rising. It's rising rapidly. We're at 40,000 feet. Still low. Search high. The F-106 pilot, when he went up there, did you think he ever had a chance of catching up? The way it rose, as fast as it went up in altitude and he passed under it at 40,000 feet, not a prayer. Not a prayer, not a chance. Was a mismatch. Oh, completely. There ain't no way, no way he could have caught that thing.
After listening to the audio account of what the Air Force referred to as the incident, Washington, D.C. MUFON Director Elaine Douglas is convinced that the tapes provide solid evidence of extraterrestrial craft. Elaine, we are sitting here in, in your office, surrounded by books and transcripts and videotapes of sightings. What about this particular audio recording impressed you so much? It's real. It's live. It's the U.S. government talking about seeing UFOs, lots of them, over a military base. Clearly, they're in airspace where uh, the only things that are supposed to be in that airspace would be U.S. military aircraft, and they're not there. And because we have the tape record of it, we know that it really happened, and it cannot be denied by the U.S. government. Some people um, involved in, in the UFO um, community believe that, that these tapes what happened to you that night proves that UFOs exist. I don't dispute that, uh, not in the least. Um, I think what we're going to find out now that the Cold War is over, that you're going to get more and more of these, uh, what has been classified over the years, released, and they're going to be able to reach some kind of a conclusion as to what we have seen. Because sightings like these often lead to ridicule, Sorrels is relieved to learn after so many years that there are other eyewitnesses and hours of audio tape to back up his story. There's one point on that tape um, that struck me, and it's when you said, I don't want to be the only one seeing this <laughs> stuff. Yes. You know, if you're the only guy in the whole world that saw this thing, then how in the world is, is anybody going to believe you? You know, I mean, you're the crazy. But if you can get another half dozen people, it's not so bad. In fact, 700 international scientists and engineers were at Edwards that night. Many believe it was more than just a coincidence. They were there on Edwards for a conference at the time. And I've always kind of wondered, well, did, did they come there to put on a show for the scientists, or was they there trying to find out what the scientists were doing? I don't know. But it was just kind of strange that they decided to show up that night as opposed to some other night. Do you believe in UFOs, extraterrestrials? I think the possibility very strongly exists that, yes, there is something beyond uh, what we know. Does it make any sense to you what it could possibly be? No, we're as much as dark light as you are. When sightings contacted the Air Force for official comment on the Edwards incident, our investigator was told only that the documents in this report are characteristic of Air Force documents of the period. Beyond that, they have no official comment on the case.